What's up guys, it's Coding Jesus, and in today's video I want to talk about the backbone, the fundamental underpinning of the entire electronic financial system. That is the fixed protocol. In today's video I'm going to be talking about what the fixed protocol is, various examples of the fixed protocol, and different message types within the fixed protocol, how it's used, what, what's really going on behind the scenes. So if you're a trader and you've always wondered, if I click that buy button, what the hell happens on the other end, this is the video for you. If you guys are new to this channel, my name is Coding Jesus. I am a high frequency trading software engineer. I write code that not only interfaces with the exchange in an automated fashion, but I also write trading applications like risk and order management systems and custom strategy systems for traders at the firm that I work at. Okay guys, what is the fixed protocol? Don't be intimidated. I'm going to break this down really simply for you. FIX stands for Financial Information Exchange. Protocol is just another word for rule set. It is a fancy tech word for a given set of rules. Let me give you an example. I can say the English protocol, the English rule set, the rule set that me and you both use to converse in English. Okay? FIX stands for Financial Information Exchange. It is the language that different systems around the world use to communicate to each other when it comes to finance, in particular order management and order entry. Okay, how does the FIX system work? And what is a FIX engine? How does somebody connect and start speaking to somebody with FIX? So if you're going to take anything out of this video, guys, is that FIX is a key value pair language or a key value pair protocol. This is how it works. I want to communicate a message to you. I want to say, I want to submit a new order. I have a key and that key is represented in an integer, let's say 35. And I have a value for 35. 35 can equal one of many things. It can equal 1, 2, D, C, whatever. And those values are known beforehand to people that are communicating with each other. Okay? So I can say, I want to submit a new order. And to do that, my message needs to be 35 equals D. Of course, I also have to specify the stocks that I want to order. I also want to specify the quantity, the price. I want to specify who I am, who I am as the sender. And all these questions as to what are you buying, how much do you want to buy, who are you, are represented in keys and values, right? So there will be a key for who the sender is. There will be a key for who the target is, for example, the CME or ICE. There will be a key for what's your sending time. There will be a key for what's the request time. And every corresponding value will either be a well-known predefined value or it will be something that was made up like your name or the current time etc, etc. So in fixed messages, what you'll see is a lot of key value pairs placed right beside each other. And we'll go into real life examples in a second. Okay, guys, so what is a fixed engine? How do I go about communicating fix, right? If I am a firm in Australia, an investment bank, and I want to communicate with an exchange in Hong Kong, I'm not going to be speaking Cantonese. I'm not going to send over Cantonese to their system. They're not going to send back English to my system. They're going to send fix this string of key value pairs. All right, so how this is communicated is through a FIX engine. A FIX engine is either or is both on the client side and on the brokerage exchange or server side. And what it does is two things. The first thing it does is it establishes a connection with the other party. Let me give you an example. I want to speak to you. I come up to you and say, hi, my name is Coding Jesus. You say, hi, my name is Viewer. I say, hi, let's start speaking. That is setting up a connection or a session with the other party. An exchange will manage hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of different sessions with people all across the world. And usually what will happen is a given proprietary trading shop can have multiple sessions with the exchange on multiple different software that they're running. Okay. The second thing that the fix engine does is it parses fix messages. Now don't get intimidated guys. This is why I'm here. Parsing is just fancy parlance for decoding. It decodes fixed messages. So let's say, for example, you are speaking to me in Cantonese and I'm speaking to you in English. I have a translator right in the middle of the two, right? You're speaking to me in Cantonese and I hear what it says in English and I speak to you in English and the translator tells you what it says in Cantonese. The only difference between fix and the recent example that I just gave you guys about speaking in two different languages is the language between the two is the same. Both parties are always speaking fix. The decoder will take that fixed message, the parsing part of the engine, and it will actually make something useful out of that message. The message in itself is key value pairs. It's a string of key value pairs, right? Number equals this, number equals this, number equals this. 
But to actually make sense of that, you need to decode what that means. So if you have 35 equals D, then your parser or your, your fixed engine will say, oh, that's a new order. Because I know 35 corresponds to the order type and D corresponds to new order. That's how you make sense of it. Okay guys, so now I'm going to be talking about the different message types and layers of message types in the fixed system. Now, as a trader, you're probably thinking, wow, oh my God, there's probably so many different message types out there, right? There are so many different things I can do on it with an exchange and with my broker. There must be tens of thousands of message types. And the beautiful thing about fix is it's very succinct. There are two different layers of fix and within each layer, there might be between 10 to 20 different fixed messages. Now, these different fixed messages will contain different tags or different keys, but regardless, there are still 10 to 15 different messages in these two layers. So let's break it down. The first layer is the session layer. This involves things that would commonly be used to set up a session. For example, when I speak to you, I need to first log on, right? I log on to your conscious. I say, hi, my name's Coding Jesus. I'm logging on to your attention span per se. So log on is a session level message. There's something called a heartbeat, which is com communicating that you're still alive. That's why it's called heartbeat. So on the session level, I will send you a fixed message that is a heartbeat. So I will send you the exchange. Hey, I'm still alive and I'm still talking to you. And you will send back, yeah, I get that you're alive and I get that you're still talking to me. If there's no heartbeat, it means the other party is dead. It means that the session has most likely been terminated. There's nobody on the other end. So if you go up to somebody and you speak to them and then they just turn around and ignore you, well, then they've terminated the session. The other party has no heartbeat. That's a way to compare it to the real world. Okay, now what will you get on the application layer? So there's the session layer and there's the application layer. The application layer is kind of the big enchilada here. It's what's actually going on when you click buy or sell. When you click buy, you're sending an application layer message and you are sending a new order message. All right, there is also a cancel, modify, or replace message. There also is a mass quote message. There is a mass quote cancel message. So there are various message types, which I will list here, that are relevant to the application layer. Okay, guys, now that we've understood the different types of messages, the different types of layers that we have in the fixed protocol, let's actually take a look at some fixed messages. And we will jump to my screen right now. All right, guys, on my screen, the very first line, you can see a fixed message. Now, the fixed message starts at eight. Eight is a tag. It is a tag, it is a key of the corresponding value, fix 0.4.2. Now, I bring this up because as you can see here, I wrote out. Out is simply a way for me to remind you guys that this fixed message starting at eight is going from me to the exchange. Likewise, if I decide to show you a message coming from the exchange to me, I'll prefix it with in such that you guys aren't confused between what's going out and what's coming in. All right, guys, this fixed message is quite long. It stretches past this page entirely. So I decided to break down the keys and values for you on the side here horizontally so you can see the entire message. All right, let's take a look at the actual message itself. So as I said, guys, fix is just a key value pair language. As you can see, this message is demarcated by a null terminator, a null terminator or a null or a space, whatever you want to call it. It's actually not a space. We'll call it a space for now, but Whatever you want to call it simply breaks up the keys and values so that you can read them quite fluently. You see key equals value, space, key equals value, space, key equals value. Okay, now what do these tags mean? Well, before we look at the actual meaning of the tag, we need to understand how this message is created or what the components of it is. The components of every fixed message is header, body, trailer. Okay, the header includes some information that is included in every single fixed message from me to the exchange. The trailer, likewise, every single message from me to the exchange has that, and every single message from the exchange to me has that. And the body is custom and can be random and can even be specific to an exchange, given what you're trying to communicate between the exchange. So let's take a look at that right now. All right, so in our header, we have a couple of things. Tag 8 is part of the header. Tag 9 is part of the header. Tag 34 is part of the header. Tag 49 is part of the header. 50, 52, 56, and 57, and 142 are all part of the header. Now, what do these mean? How do I know what eight means? Well, CME has their own documentation, which we will take a look at in a second, that tell you what tag eight means. Tag eight is just an integer, but it represents something in the real world. And in this case, it means what version of fix are we using? You might be thinking to yourself, what do you mean by version? This is a language. Shouldn't it be uniform? Well, guys, it's a language, right? So languages also have different dialects and they also have 
different versions of themselves. For example, you have Old English, New English, Ancient Chinese, Modern Chinese, Traditional Chinese, Simplified Chinese, right? So even fix in itself evolved to become its own language with its own versions. All right, guys, so this is once again what the fixed version it is. It's part of the header. This is sequence number, tag 34. This is, I don't actually remember what tag 9 is. 49 is the sender comp ID. 50 is the sender sub ID. 52 is a send time, client send time, my send time, right? Time is relative, so my send time. 56 is a destination. I don't remember what 57 is. 142 is my location. All right, so this is the header. 35 is the message type, right, guys? So 35, remember, message type. 35 equals C. What is C? In fix, C is security definition. So what does that mean? It means that there is an instrument that I want to trade that doesn't exist on the exchange and I want to define it. I want to tell CME, I want to create a custom strategy and the tag that I need to send to do that is 35 equals C. That's my message type. If I wrote 35 equals two, that's something completely different and this fixed message wouldn't be able to be parsed because it contains tags that are relevant to 35 equals C when I send a message that's 35 equals two or one or D or whatever. Okay, now let's look at the body. The body starts here at 1028. What is tag 1028 coding Jesus? It is whether it's a manual order or an automated order. When I write high frequency code or code that requires some sort of algorithmic trading or algorithmic exchange directly interfacing with the exchange, no human intervention, 1029 equals M. It is a fire, I'm firing for that, uh, firing for that instrument. I wanna buy this amount of quantity at this price. There's no human intervention. But when somebody submits a strategy request, they have to click in a UI application that I or my team build. So they click, I wanna create an order. I wanna RFQ on this new instrument. And this is what is sent. This is a manual order. 320 is a uniqueness ID. Let's discard this for now. 321, I believe is, yeah, it just says that it's a request for a new instrument to be created. 372 is what type of instrument do I wanna create? We will see it very soon that this is a call spread. So uh, it is a combo, I wanna create a combo. How many legs will this combo have? That's 555, the leg count, that is two. Okay, what's the product code? The product code is treasuries. What is the instrument? The instrument is OZNG1 call, strike 137.5. Uh, how many, uh, what is this? This is leg ratio. Okay. And guys, see, even I'm referring to the documentation because I don't remember all of these things. We'll look at the documentation in a second, but I'm just breaking down the actual message. 623 is the ratio. I only want one. 624 is the side. One is buy, two is sell. Okay. Now let's look at the second leg, right? Guys, I said I have two legs. 555 equals two. The second leg. Once again, treasuries. I want to buy the same uh, a call on the exact same with the exact same expiry on a strike that's higher. I want a ratio of one and two means sell. So I want a ratio of one. I want one of them, but I want to sell them. So I'm buying at the lower strike and selling at the higher strike. It's a call spread, and that's why it's a combo. And the very last key value pair here, the very last tag is tag ten, which is the only tag in the trailer. Like I said, header, body, trailer. Tag 10 is a checksum. It pretty much says that this message was correctly constructed or it's kind of like a verification. I won't get into that now. But as you can see, guys, this is an out message. This is a piece of information that is sent to the exchange when a trader clicks on our application's request for quote on a given custom strategy that he or she has created. At once this is sent, the exchange will either reject or accept this message. If it is rejected, it is sent as a business level reject as a 35 equals J message, which is a session level reject. This is an application level message. We will get a session level reject and nothing will come of it after. But if this message is accepted, I will get a 35 equals D message, which is security request or security definition request. And it will tell me whether it accepted it or rejected it and if it accepted it, the instrument will be created on the exchange. Now notice what I just said, guys. 35 equals J is a rejection, but 35 equals D can be an acceptance or rejection. Language is complicated, guys, and so too is fix, right? I can either be rejected with a 35 equals J or rejected with a 35 equals D. And 35 equals D can also be an acceptance. So it's kind of complicated to understand what's a rejection and what's an exception. I know that 35 equals D is an acceptance if tag 58 does not exist. 
And I know 35 equals D is a rejection if tag, thir tag 58 does exist. Tag 58 is a memo or text. If my message is rejected, it will, it will have a text message saying why. If it's not, it'll have the ID of the instrument created, it'll have the name of the instrument created, and it will not have 58 equals whatever, the reason for rejection. Okay, guys, now let's jump into the documentation. This is a documentation that I use to understand and parse fixed messages. As you can see here, if I want to see what's in the actual header itself, I can click here. But let's take a look at the body first. In the body, as we can see, tag 35, it's the message type. That's what it means. And it equals C. Like I said, security definition request. Tag 1028 is whether our order is manual or not. It is the manual order indicator. And it is either Y for manual or N for automated. Like I said, guys, a trader is literally clicking create strategy, so this will be manual. We can scroll down here, and we can see that 762 is the strategy type or the security subtype. It is either combo or covered. As we saw in my example, we were creating a call spread, so it was combo. Let's take a look at the repeating groups. Repeating groups can only exist if tag 55 exists, and for any instrument creation request, you have to have legs. You have to create an instrument with legs. So tag 55 always has to be present, and it always has to have legs. As you can see, CME's requirements is that you can only have up to 40 legs, okay? This is the really interesting point I wanna hammer home here, guys, is fix has dialects. As you can see here, this column will tell you whether this is required or not. Tag 5149 is in the body of this message, but it is not required. It is not required as part of the fix protocol. But let's take a look at this, tag 555. It is yes required, but it has a star. What does that mean? Let's scroll all the way down here and let's blow this up a bit for you guys. Why means it's required by the fixed protocol. It's part of the rule set. It's part of the grammar of the language. Why star means it's required by the CME, but not by fix, right? So me and you can speak common English and I can come up with my own slang and you'll still get the meaning. Similarly, if, it's, if a tag is Y star, that means that it's not required to speak, it's not required, it's not part of the English language, it's not part of the fixed language, but it's slang that CME will understand. That's how you can, that's how you can best put that there. So it's required by CME, it's non-standard English, it's non-standard fix, it's kind of slang, but it's still required. As you can see, they're also not required, so you don't have to send certain tags, and some tags are conditional depending on what you're actually doing with other tags. So fix is a complicated language. All right, guys, as you can see here, I have the rest of the actual tags for the body. These are repeating groups. As you saw, we had multiple tags 620, given the amount of legs that we have. And as you can see here, guys, if you want to learn more about the trailer, you can click on this and you can read more about the checksum. I'll put all this documentation in the description box below. And with that, guys, I'd like to end the video. I know it was a little long, but hopefully you've gained a deep insight as to what Fix is and how it works. If you like this video, guys, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more, guys. I know you guys like the trading technology as well as my own takes on uh, technical analysis, my own code videos, etc. So if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell button to get the latest and greatest in coding Jesus, and leave a comment in the comment section below what you thought. If you had any questions, I always respond to you guys. We also have a Discord if you want to join the Church of Coding Jesus. Link in the description box below, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers.